Once upon a time, creating animations meant drawing thousands of frames until you got exhausted. But those days are way behind us. Comfy UI has literally revolutionized animation, and you can now create any animation of your choice with a few simple steps. The new Comfy UI helps with morphing animations that are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also simple to create. So if you're eager to learn how to create those impressive morphing videos from any image using the Comfy UI, you might want to stick around a little longer. In this tutorial video, we'll guide you through a step-by-step -step approach, sharing shortcuts and other tips along the way. So, let's get started. How to get started with Comfy UI First things first, Comfy UI is a free and customizable interface for stable diffusion that many folks use to create amazing AI videos. The best part? You have a number of options to get started. One option is through a simple local install, which is great if you meet the requirements, but don't worry if you don't. We've also got you covered with a cloud-based solution. Ideally, you should have a Windows operating system, Windows 10 or 11 preferably, and a decent NVIDIA GPU with at least 8GB of VRAM. If you're unsure whether your computer meets these requirements, you can check by opening the Run app and using the dxdiac command to check your PC's specs. Search for the display memory. The higher the RAM, the faster Comfy UI runs on the system. You can download Comfy UI on certain chipsets if you have a MacBook, however, it might be a little slower. The link to process the Comfy UI download is embedded in the description below. The installation process is much like that of any desktop app. Also, you will have to download the Comfy UI Manager from the link in the description, copy the extracted file and put it in the file for Comfy UI. I know the hardware requirements might seem overwhelming, but not to worry. The second method or the cloud-based solution doesn't require any hardware. The service charges a small fee for the hardware you want to imitate, so really this option is an excellent solution if you don't have a powerful computer. Download and Import Workflow once you get Comfy UI and start it for the first time, you will see the default text-to-image workflow made of basic blocks known as nodes. Visit Civit AI to download the webflow created by IPIV to get the animation process rolling. Shout out to IPIV for making this available to the community. Once you download it, drag and drop the JSON file into the Comfy UI. You might see some missing nodes. To fix this issue, open the manager and click on Install Missing Nodes. Click all the missing nodes and tap on Install. Once you are done, close and click on Update All on the manager to ensure all your extensions get updated. Restart Comfy UI to see if the updates will show. Keep in mind that every web flow you import will likely require some AI models that aren't on your computer yet. Also, most web flows have links embedded in the notes. You can download them directly. Now, let's get to the juicy part. How to tweak your settings for stunning outputs. Here I will be showing you several settings that can significantly improve the output you get from Comfy AI. The setting model is at the bottom left. Let's look at the features you will find on the setting model. There is LoRa, Load Checkpoint, Load VAE, Empty Latent Image. Besides the settings section, we also have the Animate Diff, where you can make more edits to the appearance of the animation. On the Animate Diff, Features like the motion scale allow you to alter the amount of motion your video gets. While you can tweak the amount any way you want, I recommend you stick with a safe number between 1 and 2. This section contains IP adapters, context, and QR code control net, where you find the video mask. The video mask is what gives that morphing pattern. You can always experiment with different masks. The setting you have to take note of is Animate Diff Laro Strength. Using this feature increases the consistency between frames and reduces flicker and variations. You could also load a checkpoint of your choice. This checkpoint decides the virtual style of your output. You are free to play around with the different models available. Resolution is another central setting that can alter the output you get. Usually the resolution is set at 288. I'd recommend you keep it the same, but if you want a more horizontal video, then you could change it because the set resolution is for a vertical video, which is mainstream on most social media platforms. I also need to mention that videos with low resolution allow for faster processing time, and you can always tweak it after the video. Now let's get down to business. 
How to generate morphing animations After you have tweaked the setting to what you desire, it's time to start generating those animations. For inputs, you have to load four images here. The image prompt will go through the control net and IP adapters and get fed to the k-sampler. After the k-sampler, the platform offers the first preview. Once it is time for upscaling, the video goes through the second case sampler, which upscales it by a factor of 1.5 before undergoing a series of further upgrades. And that's it, folks. No rocket science. Why don't we try it? Let's upload four images. Now that I have uploaded the four images, it's time to tweak the notes. I tap the preset option on the IP adapter section. The options available dictate how much the animation will resemble your image prompts. You can pick between low and high strength depending on your preference. It includes the IP adapter weight, which dictates the transformation strength on each image. You can type in any amount, but I am going with one. The next option is weight type, which is linear by default. This is okay, as it is excellent for your video. Let's go down to the QR control net. Here we will find the load video node. There is a link to a video, and it opens to a black and white video that guides the animation structure. There are several options, so you can pick whichever will suit your project more. If you find any one that suits you besides the default video, copy the link and paste it into the provided space. When it comes to video generation, K-Sampler does most of the work. On the note, you will find features like steps that control your output's quality. The higher the steps, the better quality you get. However, there is a trade-off. The higher the steps, the longer the processing time. Also, ensure you don't change your CFG value, leave it at 1. For the sampler name and scheduler on the node, the default option works. But while running the process, I realize that Euler and Normal give slightly better outcomes. You can experiment if you have the time to develop your preferred options. There are two K-samplers. The one we just handed is for the preview stage, while the second is responsible for upscaling. You can rename it if you want. Now, aside, let's review what you must change here. Before we make any adjustments, let's start with the video combine nodes. These are the sets of nodes after the second K-sampler. Also, they are responsible for upscaling the video's quality. For excellent quality, reduce the CRF in three nodes to five. After, go to the top of the K-sampler, where you see Upscale Image Buy. The option you choose depends on the size you want. For instance, 720p is 2.5. If you wish to use 1080p like me, enter 3.75. Match the K-Sampler 2 with all the values of the first K-Sampler. The only difference is in the value of denoise. Increase it to say 0.5. But before we run a preview, we have to remember a couple of things. We mentioned the upscale nodes next to the K-Sampler. The upscale nodes slow down the video generation time. Remember I said we would touch on how to speed up the generation process? This is it. Select all the upscale nodes, then press Ctrl and M, which mutes all the nodes. These nodes also include the K-Sampler 2 and the nodes around. Round. Then tap on the run. When you hit run, the process kicks off and continues for a couple of minutes. But if it had included the upscale nodes, it would take much longer. I prefer to have the video before deciding to upscale it. With the upscale nodes out of the picture, the preview is much faster, regardless of the size of your device VRAM. Remember, the settings you use determine the output. As with most AI tools, it only uses your input to determine the output. Therefore, you might have to go through several settings to get what you like. Besides, finding your output is easy. Just go to Comfy UI. The outputs are in organized folders by date. If you want to find your final result, open the folder and look at the interpolated folder, and you will see them there. Comfy UI has made animation a much more enjoyable process. Although the process might seem a little cumbersome for some people, People, the learning curve is pretty straightforward. The more you experiment with the different node settings, the closer you are to finding what really works for you. If you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button and help us reach our goal of at least 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And if you missed our last upload, don't sweat it. I have it showing on the screen right here for you to watch.